Previously on MasterChef. Steam! In the steam oven invention test, Jonathan and Charlene starred under pressure. Oh, I don't think you could have cooked that any better. That is the best cake I've had in my life. Then shone again in a towering test of teamwork. As Fiona and Alpha came up tragically short. And you think it's okay? Yes. Seriously? Yes. Coming up, a volatile mini mystery box. <laughs> My face is on fire. Triggers an explosion of flavour. It's perfection. But first, friendships are on the chopping block. I've never been so heartbroken before. <laughs> As a new power couple try to steal the limelight. I still can't believe it. I see Audra standing by herself and I see two crates with Damien and Bjorn like hiding in the crate. It's MasterChef Kitchen. Nothing is ever normal. So every week, we take the challenges up a notch. This week, it's your star ingredients that are going up another level. And today, they're coming straight from the farm. They could not be any fresher. See for yourselves. Ta-da! Bjorn and Damien, they look like farmers. A bit theatrical, but I think it sets the mood. For your cook today, we've selected six premium quality proteins from the CS Fresh suppliers. These ingredients will turn any home into a fine dining hub. We have whole salmon, Bostock organic whole chicken, and we also have Australian king prawns, extra jumbo size. I've got Angus grass-fed ribeye steak, Wagyu strip loin steak, and beautiful lamb rack. It's amazing looking produce, and I'm really excited to work with it. Look closely, because if you know your proteins and correctly answer my next question, you'll gain two powerful advantages in the next cook. So, be the first to raise your hand if you know which of these six proteins is grown in an apple orchard. Okay, and Naresh was first? The lamb. Bam, wrong. Andy? Uh, the chicken. The chicken, yes! Correct! Right. They're raised on a New Zealand organic apple orchard where they roam about, feasting on juicy apples and lush green grass. Hey, I want something, but where's my reward? Andy, yes. here's your first advantage. This will be a team challenge. <laughs> you can pick your teammate and then assign everyone else into teams of two. Too much power, like, don't know how to use. All right, Andy, who's it going to be? I'm expecting Andy to go with Ilya because we have this bromance going on. So I'm going with Naresh today. <laughs> ah, nice. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> All right, who are in the other teams, Andy? All right, so I'll let Ilya pair with Charlene okay. and Jonathan and Charmin. I don't know what Andy's strategy was. Maybe he knows that Ilya and I won't be able to gel, and his strategy was to get rid of Ilya. Let's get on to your task for today. Each team must star two of these premium quality proteins in a two-cost meal for the three of us. That means each course must have three servings. Andy. Yes. Your second advantage is to assign two proteins to each team. So first up, which two proteins would you like? So for us, we're taking lamb and prawns. I'm not that much of a lamb eater, but I just want to show the judges we are versatile cooks. And for the green team, Andy? Uh, I give them chicken and the wagyu. Good choice. I've eaten uh, quite a fair bit of wagyu beef before. I think we'll nail it. Which means blue tea, you're left with salmon and the ribeye. Ant steak is the 
biggest advantage we could offer you. We will be ranking each team's dishes, and the higher your team places, the more time each team member will receive in the next round. So right now, Damien and I need a few minutes to change, but you guys will get 75 minutes to plan and execute your dishes, and that time starts now! Do you need any help? Do you need me to get you anything? Uh, no, it's okay. You sure? Yeah. The chemistry is perfect between both of us. Both are working simultaneously on two separate dishes. Jonathan focus solely on the fish, and I am going to focus on the ribeye steak. Team combinations. I actually thought it was very interesting that Andy selected someone else other than Iliad. They might have some issues tonight when they go back, right? But just looking at them now, that's a happy couple. Bjorn, what do you think? First of all, I don't see any bad team combinations and I don't see any bad protein choices. So everything looks set to give us some spectacular food today. You know what's really great? Yeah. Cross racial. Oh yeah. Can you imagine we have cross racial cuisine coming in? Oh yeah. I think it'll be really interesting. How the both of you? It's going pretty well. We click very well. I remember the last challenge you and Charmin. There yes. was a little bit of squabbling going on. <laughs> Nares, stop what you're doing. Do you want to take a look at this? Give me a second, give me okay. a second. Nares, I'm not quite clear on this. Nares, 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 dude. <sighs> I don't see any squabbling here. <laughs> you found a new love. He's finding a lot of loves. <laughs> so what dish are you making? For the prawn, it's going to be... Deep fried lamb meal, lime meal. Yeah. and salsa. Yeah. Okay. For the lamb, we're gonna pair it with pureed rendang sauce. Pureed rendang sauce. The strategy that we are going with is the same strategy that I applied on the previous team challenges. It's not just a one percent per dish. It's gonna be like a combination of both cooks into one dish. Nobody heroes a dish totally. Do you wanna peel the prawns or shall I do the prawns? Let me get this one and then I'll do the prawns. But looking at the both of you, I think. You know what the hell you're doing, and that's good. Good luck, guys. Thank you. Good luck. Sir. Thank you. All right, Charlene and Ilya. Hi. Tell us what's happening. So for the beef dish, we're gonna sear it and have a leek wrap around it like a skewer, and some couscous inside as well. And then for the chicken, we're doing a curry chicken and drawing inspiration for roti jala. Chicken curry. Yep. Have you tried the chicken yet? I have not. I do suggest that you guys try the proteins because the proteins are very exquisite by themselves. You okay. know, if you feel like it needs the extra flavor, then go for it. But if you feel like it doesn't need, then honestly, less is more, yeah? Thank you. Okay. I don't want the curry to overpower the chicken. So that's why I'm planning to cook it separately. Word of the day is quality. Quality proteins and teamwork. You've got 45 minutes to go. Last yeah. round, when Shamin was paired with Naresh, they were bickering a little bit. So I told her, let's not fight. I need to remain focused and do my best. Jonathan, Shamin, hey, how are you God. feeling today? Yeah. Happy with your partner? Absolutely. I am. Tell me, what are you guys cooking today? We've been given the choice of the ribeye steak yep. and the salmon. Yes. Jonathan is making a sous vide salmon. Okay. And for the ribeye steak, I'm going to pan sear it and finish it off in the oven. How thick is your steak going to be? You're I'm not, not going to keep it very thick. You're going to have a piece of leather if you're going to have it thin. Okay. And then in the oven for five okay. to seven. All right. I think you're really going to have to uh, use your personal okay, judgment got, on okay, this one. Sure. If you see Sorry. sesame in the pantry, grab one for me. Ilya and Charlene, they're doing two dishes with chicken and wagyu beef. They sound like they're doing a little bit too much to what are essentially very, very prime ingredients on their own, you know? Like I said earlier, let the ingredients shine. Here's where my concern is. When we create menus, it is very important that the menu actually blends. With some of these guys, I'm a um, little confused and it almost seems as though one party is taking responsibility over one dish without really thinking it through. Yeah. Charlene is a teacher, right? And she's always watching over her students like a hawk. How's the curry? The curry is... Uh, Do you get the butter? Uh, I need to keep up to speed or else... Elia. Hello. Tell me, yeah. Uh, is the bromance over? Yes, definitely is. <laughs> so disappointed. I've never been so heartbroken before. Can we reconcile, right? No. <laughs> 
Right, guys, you got 30 minutes to go. It is time to produce with your produce. This is my first time filleting a salmon. This is also my first time sous a salmon. 30 minutes left, the salmon fillets are in a sous bag. I underestimated the amount of time needed because I never worked with such a big fish before. Johnny boy, what is Hi, happening? Bjorn. Can I have a look at your salmon? Yeah, sure. What temperature are you cooking at? 52. 52? Okay. Yeah. This is going to stay very tender. You've chosen a very good cooking method for this fish. So it should flake apart still. Right. But it's going to be very juicy, is it? Yes, correct. That's precision cooking right there. Is there anything that you're worried about? Really? Time management, man. Go, John. Go. Thank you. I'm just all guns blazing. I'm gunning for it. For team challenge, I think judges want to see how two cooks can gel and produce one power dish. Lah. Is it seasoned already? I just seasoned. Please and see. So our strategy is to work on different components at one time, and then we call each other and taste each other's components. So yeah, a lot of communications going on here. Hi, no rush. How things going, chef? What is this? Now? So this is actually a masala potato, something ah, that we have at home for the lamb so, to sit on. So this is your secret weapon. <laughs> Somewhat. What you marinate for the lamb? So yeah. we're just doing salt and pepper. Great. Uh, Great. And that's Nothing basically that. just about it. And then you're going to have a rendang sauce. This. Yes. That's going to be at the side. Nothing will be smeared on the okay. on the thing itself. Okay. You're keeping the best of yes. the lamb for flavour yes. intact. Yes. Okay, great. Thank you, Chef. Whatever you do with your protein, don't overdo it. You got 10 minutes to go. It's crunch time. The lamb is ready in the oven. I'm going to fry the prawns. Andy and Naresh, the lamb with the rendang, they're going to serve it with masala potatoes. Oh, I am looking forward to masala potatoes. Absolutely cross-cultural, oh, isn't it? Cross-cultural. Oh. Okay, right? The beef is looking good. I'm not checking much on Charlene because she seems confident in her dish. That's <laughs> all. Just do my own thing. Hero, your protein on your plate. You've got two minutes to go. Get hold of this stuff. Get, get. I can't wait to sink my teeth into this meal. You've got ten seconds. Ten. Nine. nine eight, eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Thumbs up, guys. <laughs> Today, you guys teamed up cooking premium quality proteins. Time to find out if your dishes are as exceptional as your starting ingredients. Blue team, bring up your dishes. I'm feeling pretty good about what I plated out, and I'm hoping that Shamin's dish is also a really good dish. So for my appetizer, I made a sous vide salmon with asparagus two ways. So I've made pan seared ribeye steak with a mushroom sauce and potato espuma. Right, let's start with your dish, uh, Jonathan. That buttery, smooth, silky finish, that's exactly what you achieved. It's beautifully seasoned, you know, it's right amount of acidity. The only comment I've got to make is the bloodlines of the salmon. When you actually fillet it, the bit that is actually closest to the bone is where all the bloodline is. Right. It's not that sort of pleasant to look at, but perfectly fine to eat. All you need to do when you present it is flip it over so you get the coral pink part of the salmon. But otherwise, Thank I loved you. it. What I want to compliment you on is portion size. The portion size is just absolutely perfect. The composition, empty space in the middle, very artfully done. For me, the salad was just a little bit sharp for my liking. Balsamic vinegar has that very sharp tip on it. Everything else, spot on. Thank you, Chef. Shaman, how would you like your steak cooked? Usually a medium rare. I took your advice and just fancied it. That was my advice if you had originally gone for your thin cut. <sighs> Shaman, how would you like your steak cooked? Usually a medium rare. I took your advice and just fancied it. That was my advice if you had originally gone for your thin cut. Oh, okay. Mm. Shaman, unfortunately for me, the steak is way under. It's actually raw. I can't eat this. And when you've got a beautiful premium cut of meat, this is a little disappointing. 
Charmin, I'm a bit lost. You had four pieces of steak and you left four pieces there without trying it or without cutting it. Why didn't you try it? That is not enough salt. The mustard wasn't necessary. Everything's wrong. Thanks, guys. The judges actually gave very nice comments about my dish, so I'm just praying that it's enough to carry us through. Next up, green tea. So looking around at the other dishes, I'm not feeling confident at all. I know that we're not going to do well. So today's dish is fancy chicken with fondant potatoes and carrots, curry sauce, as well as uh, crispy roti jala. I've made wagyu leek skewers on couscous with an Asian slaw. All right, Elia, I feel like you cooked your chicken breast well. It was actually very juicy and I was very impressed. But what I didn't like was a lack of seasoning. You want to bring out the flavour, so a lot more salt would have helped that a lot. If you had given a bit more reduction time in the curry sauce, I'd say it would have been just done, because I think you had a good base there. Elia, what went into the curry sauce? Cinnamon, coriander and cloves. All right, my chicken was beautifully cooked, very succulent. But the sauce, unfortunately, Bit of a letdown. Cloves are very strong, right? very pungent, and the sauce is quite watered down. Well, you're capable of better than this. I'm truly quite disappointed. Charlene, I like that you pushed yourself with the concept of this and you wanted to give us a skewer. The beef has been overcooked. The couscous for me, under flavored, under seasoned. I don't quite see the match here with the coleslaw. It's like two separate dishes. So, not your best work so far. Charlene, the beef is dry, it's unsalted, the coleslaw doesn't work. These two dishes for me are totally two separate flavour profiles. There's not even something that actually connects them both. You two are very capable cooks, but I'm really not sure where you were headed with this dish. Thanks, guys. I feel like we missed the brief today. I mean, there's not much to say. OK, next up, red team. No matter how long you have been in this competition, that feeling of walking up, it's always a nervous experience. To start you off, uh, we have a bit of a bottoms up. Because of how the prawn is positioned, it's deep-fried prawns with lime mayonnaise and salsa. This is called Mindian, because this Malay has decided to go Indian. <laughs> uh, it's lamb chops with masala potato and rendang puree. I'm going to say something, and I think the people watching this on TV might not believe me. This is the best fried prawn I have ever put in my mouth. You use the word salsa when you describe the dish, and then it comes out more like a acha than a salsa. And that's brilliant. For a guy who sells cars, you completely undersold this dish. Give me five more plates of this anytime. A dish like this? So simple, but so sophisticated. I started to peel the prawns. You made it easy for me because you cut the back. And then I picked up uh, fried legs. Then I started eating the shells. The whole thing could be eaten because you fried it so well. There's so much refinement in a very simple dish like this. Beautifully executed. Well done. Well done, both of you. The lab. This is the epitome of taking two races and blending them and making something completely outstanding. The rendang with the masala potatoes. It's something that you could be eating outside and then you accidentally mix on your plate. But you engineered it today and this was perfectly crafted. I don't know whether you're speaking to each other in your minds, but it's like the two of you knew exactly what you wanted to create in terms of flavours. And to be really honest with you, the acha, the lime mayo dressing, the potato salsa and the rendang sauce, it's a damn good vegetarian dish, man. Well done, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Like, finally, the last time I wore this colour, huh, I was in the losing team. So it's like redemption. Team challenges are never easy. You've got to get on the same page. And if you don't, your menus are just never going to gel. One team's menu stood out. Proteins were perfectly cooked the way all good quality premium proteins should be. And the flavours? We're next level. That team is Red Team. Andy and Naresh, you have each earned 10 minutes to use in the next round. Second place team was the Blue Team. Shamin and Jonathan, you'll have five extra minutes to use in round two. Green Team, 
That leaves you guys. Quite obviously, we were least impressed by your dishes today. Charlene and Ilya, you'll have to make do with only two minutes and 30 seconds extra in round two. You can all switch back to your white aprons because it's every cook for themselves from here on. So we are the worst team today and that is just painful. Lah. But I'm hoping that it's not really detrimental to our chances, the next cook. All right, guys, shall we get into it? Reach under your benches and you will find a little surprise. So I'm looking at this box and my first reaction is, who's getting married? Open your boxes in three, two, one. Today's theme is chilli. I love chilli. I love spicy things, so it's like match made in heaven. Today, you're going to need to demonstrate the unparalleled versatility of chilli with not one, but two courses. A savoury and a sweet dish, both featuring chilli as a star ingredient. In the pantry, we have 12 different chilli varieties. So you can choose the intensity you're after. You will only be given five minutes in the pantry to gather all the ingredients you need. You will then have 70 minutes to cook your two courses. 70 minutes to cook two dishes. I'm panicking. This is where your work in round one comes into play. The extra time that you earned can be split between the pantry and your cook. It's up to you to decide how you split your time. Take a look at your time to plan your strategy. I need to do a lot to overcome this challenge because I like to take my time, but I just have two and a half minutes today. Just to be clear, anything more than five minutes in the pantry will eat into the time you've earned. Your five minutes in the pantry starts now. I'm going to use as little as I can so I have more time for my cook. Two minutes of free time left, guys. Five, four, three, two, one. That is the end of your free time. You're eating into your cooking time now. What other kinds of chili? Uh... In fact, huh? I'm slow at finding things in the pantry. And I only have two and a half minutes of extra time, so I'm pretty much doomed. Lah. Okay, I'm out. Oh my god, I forgot to take sugar. Can I grab something and sorry? Huh? No? Like, sorry. Can I grab something and... Sorry, huh? can't no? I forgot to take sugar, so I don't have sugar as a seasoning to balance the saltiness. So, yeah, stupid lah. Doors are closing. I hope you have everything you need because the pantry is now closed. We've updated the scoreboards to show you how much time you can add to your cook. Andy, you have the most amount of time, so you'll be starting the cook. Everyone else? We will call you in as the clock counts down. Andy, your 79 minutes and one second starts now. Naresh, you ready? Five, four, three, two, one, you go. One of the key elements for both my dishes is rice. And I can't believe it. I actually forgot to get rice. Charmin, you start in three, two, one, go! This setback is not going to stop me. I've got to change my plan and find a way to make it work. Jonathan, go! And last of all, Ilya, Charlene, go! I have the Carolina Reaper in my hand. It's the hottest chili in the world. And I've always wanted to try how spicy these things really are. It's, it's going up my nose, guys. Sorry. Andy, yeah. you, you're trying to kill us? So I'm just trying out each chilli. This is not spicy, this is the one. And then the heat catch on a bit later. Dude, that's a Carolina. That's the one that's going to kill us, right? Yeah. Tell me, what are you cooking for us today? So my savoury will be jenganan with yep. a pan uh, red snapper. Okay. My sweet, I really didn't know what to do for... Then I saw this. This is like a guava, I think. I don't no. think that's guava. No. Oh, no. Chocos. Chocos. Oh. Choco. What is choco? I've never used choco. It's tasteless. But the texture is like a very crispy apple. 
Oh, okay. Can? Okay. Can you walk with that? Yeah. Okay, just remember, don't kill us, okay? Yeah. We're nice people. I won't, I won't, don't worry. Right. You've got seven, eight minutes left to cook two courses starring chili. Come on, guys. Hi, Charlene. Hi. You've got chili patties and you have the normal red chilies. What's your savory dish? Chili ban mian. <laughs> That's good, though. Mwati. You're going to do mwati with? Chocolate, ganache and chili. You had no sugar, right? No. What are you going to use to replace the sugar? Chocolate. Chocolate. Only chocolate? Yeah. You think that's going to work? I hope so. Good luck to you, Charlene. I've never made mwati in this way before. Like, with a chocolate ganache filling. I don't know how it's going to turn out. I'm using the chili party and the habanero because I personally can't really take a lot of spice. I like to eat chilies. It's just I physically am not too good with handling chilies. You know, I'll sweat a lot. So to make it the style of your dish will be a bit tough for me at least. Jonathan. Hi, Audra. How are you going? Um, going well. I'm inspired by Korean food. Oh. So my savoury dish is going to be a grilled pork okay. with spicy Korean rice ball, okay. as well as a spicy cabbage slaw. Okay. And then for the dessert, I'm going to be making spicy dark chocolate flourless cake okay. with a honey and vanilla ice cream. Just make sure the chilli doesn't overwhelm. It It just gives us a really good flavour and it's highlighted. Okay. 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 Brilliant. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you. Hi, Sharvin. Hey, Chef. What two dishes are you making for okay. us? My main is pork vindaloo. Pork oh, vindaloo. Yeah, Very nice. so that's something close to my heart. It takes four days to make. I'm hoping I can make my ancestors happy by trying to cook it in one hour. I have started on a limb because I didn't take one of the main components for my dessert, rice. What so dessert was that supposed to I be? I was supposed to do rice here. Okay, well, don't let that hinder you. In fact, take that as an opportunity to come up with something new. I don't have rice, but I have an apple, and I decide to use it as a substitute. I have taken an apple. Yep. I'm just going to pressure cook it and see if I can come up with an idea with whatever remaining ingredients I have for a dessert. See the bright side. I'll leave you to it. Thank you. So I've checked in on Shamin. For her dessert, it was supposed to be a rice kheer. Yeah. But she forgot to take the rice. So she's got one apple and she's put that in the pressure cooker because she wants to cook it till it's soft and make a puree. But to me, it's like, how does an apple puree constitute yeah. a dessert? Let's talk about Andy and his choco, mm -hmm. right? It's a fruit, but most people use it like a vegetable. So I'm very interested to see if he can turn magic into that choco, because at this point in time, I'm not super excited. 40 minutes to go. Fire up or burn out? I am not feeling really confident, but I use it a lot. It's the little spark that I need to get back in the game, man. Hi, Elia. Hello. What are your chilies that you picked? Okay, so I picked the regular chili, chili party, party yeah. and also the Carolina Reaper. Carolina Reaper? Well, you don't like us, is it? So I'm hoping that I can balance it nicely okay. so that it's not too spicy. What's your savoury? Okay, so my savoury dish is a play on sotong masak hitam that will go with noodles using prawn. So I'm going to mandolin it. You have enough time? Thinly. I'm hoping that I can rush. And you're sweet? So okay. it's a play on uh, goreng pisang. Uh, with Carolina Reapers hiding inside the bananas. No, no, no. no. <laughs> no. So in my household, yeah. we enjoy goreng pisang with sambal sili kicap. Oh yes, that's yes. right. I'm thinking of doing a crumble as well. I'm going well, to be I'm really looking forward to that dessert. Yes, hopefully it will come together. Good luck. Thank you. So the first dish that is currently being cooked is the roasted chilli brownies. Now I'm actually doing the tacos for my savoury dish. I've never made tacos before, but why not try today, right? Whether it's the elimination challenge or not, let's play with it a bit. And because it's relatively easy to do, let's go have some fun. Naresh. Hi, Audra. Oh, you're a happy man today. <laughs> yeah, I'm a bit happy. Yeah, why's that? I don't know. I think I've just changed my mindset on how I want to see this competition as. Not to think too much about it. Just cook the food that I would want to eat. I'm at a point where, as long as I give my best, I'm very happy. If I move on, I'll be even happier. How's your dish coming along? Um, okay, so I'm doing the savoury right now. Yes. The brownie will be out in yes. three minutes. So how are you going to serve your cake? Any accompaniments? Um, so I'll just melt a bit of chocolate, add it with a bit of the sour cream and add some chilli in there, and then probably I'll serve it together. Okay, so there. there's chilli in the cake, and then yes. you're going to have chilli in yep. the actual glaze as well, yes. right? Yes. 
Under 25 minutes, so chop chop, ah? No problem. Okay. Ooh, Charing Padron Pepper is one of my favourite sights and smells in the world. Last time I checked in on you, you were still forming a plan for your dessert. Where is that now? What's Necessity happening Necessity is the mother of invention. I've made an apple tear. Apple tear? cinnamon and a bit of this chilli. How much more time do you think your vindaloo is going to need? I'm going to let it be there for at least another 8 to 10 minutes. That's the key? Fantastic. All right, guys, you have 15 minutes to go. Time to set our taste buds on fire! Andy. Yes? If you win, how important is it for oh. you to win this title? Um, me and my family made sacrifices for me to be here. They're all supporting you at home. My wife with three kids at home. I call them every day and they're like, oh, go, oh, Papa, like, I'm so proud of you, I miss you, and... So I don't want the sacrifices to be in vain. So I'm going to make every moment count here. So you need to churn yeah. all that heart that they've given you. And you've got to put it in all these dishes. Yes, thank you. I am a bit short of time. There's less than 10 minutes left. My noodles are not even cooked yet. Still trying to finish the party balls. <laughs> it's just chaos. Charlie. Yeah. How are you feeling? Stressed. Yeah, you breathe in, man. It's all good, it's all good. I don't know. Like, don't doubt yourself, girl. Seriously. <laughs> You're in the position that you are now in. Just roll with it. Focus on getting the elements right and don't freak. Audra has a lot of faith in me, but at that point, I'm thinking I might not be able to serve two dishes. <laughs> Guys, everyone is very excited. I've seen some incredible highs, but the one person that I'm really actually quite worried about is Charlene. She is very stressed. She won't even look me straight in the eye when she's talking to me. She's just head down, you know, droopy shoulders, and you kind of feel for her, but here's the thing. If you haven't got the ingredient, don't force it. You've really got to start thinking about something else. I'm feeling chilly down my spine because you guys have only five minutes left to go. There's two minutes left and then it hits me, Naresh, you have not done the sauce or the brownies yet and you don't have time. One minute to go, plate up a sweet and a savoury, guys. You have 10 more seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. That's it, guys. Time's up. We asked you to spice things up with chilies. Now we hope your dishes are flavorful and not just flammable. Let's start with you, Ilya. I'm hoping to impress the judges, but I am not feeling really confident. Ilya, tell us, what have you made for us today? So for the uh, savoury dish, I called it prawn cooked black, little translation to udang masa hitam. For the sweet dish, I call it the banana lala. It's a take on kuring pisang. So it's a caramelised banana on coconut crumble. And the caviar's are spicy soy. For the savoury dish, I use only chilli padi. For the sweet dish, I use half of the Carolina Reaper. I really feel your soul coming through with these two dishes. This is really Ilya on a plate. Your savoury dish, all the elements are on point. Your sauce is perfect. It's got a perfect amount of heat. Your prawns are cooked perfectly. I just wish there was a crunchy vegetable element. This is your sotong masaitam. Let's see if I hadn't had sotong masaitam before. I put it in my mouth, I get the mushroom, I get the sauce, and I'm like, wow, it's a flavour bomb. Your dessert, it looked like a mess, but when you eat it, wow. So extremely textural, and the genius of those soy sauce pearls on that banana dessert, who would have thought? Beautiful. Welcome back to the game, Ilya. This caramelized banana. Your crumble is great. I don't agree with Bjorn because I like my food ugly. The important thing is that when you put it in your mouth, you forget ugly. You're sending me to different parts of the world. These are dishes that we expect from Ilya. Thank you, Ilya. Back.
I see myself not in the finals, but with the trophy. Yeah. <laughs> Next up, we have Charlene. So today I made a chili panni, and the dessert is a chili chocolate mochi. I use dried chili for both of the dishes because I'm hoping the similar flavor of the chili would kind of tie the both courses together. I forgot sugar and the potato starch. Right. <laughs> this was a bloody delicious dish. Your noodles were on point, beautiful texture. That umami dried chili XO mixture. It was so tasty, it just continuously makes your mouth water. Charlene, the depth of flavour that you got there with all the ingredients that you used in your XO sauce, incredible. Talk about your mochi. If you didn't tell me that you were short of ingredients, I would have never known. I wish I could keep going back and eating that whenever I want to. And you know what? I don't even like mochi. And see this empty plate? I wish there was another mochi here for me to eat because that was delicious. Thank you very much for this. Thank you. I am such a wreck because it really feels so hard, but I will try my best. Just for all the women out there, go power. <laughs> <laughs> Come on up, Shaman. Walking up to the judges, I am pretty happy with what's on the plate. But I'm not sure how it's going to go because I don't have any starch to balance out the spiciness in my pork. Shaman, what did you make for us today? Okay, I took a biggest gamble of trying to replicate a dish which takes four days to make in one hour. It's called the pork vindaloo. I was initially supposed to make a rice here, but I forgot to get the main ingredient, rice, from the pantry. So at the spur of the moment, I decided to make an apple kheer, which also has pardon peppers and a bit of uh, chili patty. Shamin, for those who know vindaloo, they know it to be the hottest curry out there. You've given us a very polite version. Seasoning-wise, I think it's good. Your pork is perfectly cooked. I love how you've paired it with the padron peppers. I do feel, though, that a bit of depth of flavour is missing. Okay. Like you said, it normally takes four days. Shaman, I was really yearning for some heat. Okay, because when you don't get that heat, but you've got a very strong vinegar base, it just feels out of balance. And I'm like, mmm, don't really want to go in for that second bite. Your dessert has a nice texture, but I'm missing the chilli. It does taste a little bit sandy because of the powdered spice, but I'm just left wondering where is the chilli in your dessert? This, I really hate to say, you know what I'm going to say, right? It's a bit like baby food. I'm sorry, Shaman. Thank you. Next up to the tasting table is Andy. So as I'm walking up, I'm looking at my new friend, Joko. Please be nice to me. So for the savoury, I call it the Reef. It's a pan seared red snapper with janganan sauce and lightly pickled veggie. For the sweet, it's called Ring of Fire. It's a pickled choco with asam jelly. Your savoury dish, I have one word for you. Ready for it? Your savoury dish, I have one word for you. Ready for it? It's perfection. It's so well balanced in terms of flavours. The fish was perfectly cooked. That jaganan was like, hello! With all your coral elements are crispy, everything had a purpose. Perfection. Andy, you. you finally made the twill happen today on your fish dish and that is brilliant because it is super crispy and it adds so much to the dish. Every other element there is perfectly in harmony, perfectly in balance. Moving into the dessert, it's mind-bendingly good because you've got spicy, sour, sweet elements in here. My mind is completely twisted by this and I'm intrigued and I want to come back for more. Jeez, man, Andy. Assam jelly, which is genius. It's a really refreshing dessert at the end of a meal. You made Choco's cool again, and I loved it. Loved it. Thank you. Thank you very much. At this point, yeah, I'm just gunning for the top. Every cook from now on. 
Next up, Jonathan. For the main course, I made grilled pork loins with spicy jew milk bark. And for the dessert, I made a spicy lava cake with a salted honey and vanilla ice cream. I used habaneros and chili padi in my lava cake, chili padi in my slaw, and habanero in my rice. And then I did a spicy drizzle on the pork. Jonathan, that spicy kimchi cabbage was delicious. The rice, it's got a really nice texture. It's just perfectly cooked. The pork was a very subtle flavouring. So yes, you could have probably amped up the flavour on the pork. But you know what? I thoroughly enjoyed it. I actually really like spice. And I like that the pork caresses you gently. The kimchi is fresh and nice. Then suddenly, pam! <laughs> It's a mix of pleasure and pain. So this, for me, is a massive success of a dish. And for a chocolate lava cake, I'd say that's a very good attempt. Thank you. Your doneness is a touch over, but the texture is great, taste is great, and I would happily eat that as a soft, warm chocolate cake. What's really beautiful about this dessert is the chilli is not so pronounced at the start. But when it hits you, it starts to warm up at the back of your throat. Your ice cream is so creamy, so smooth and beautiful scent of honey that works with the subtle chilli so well. Thank you. Naresh, bring up your dishes, please. For my savoury, I've done a beef taco with some masala and some sour cream. And for the sweet, I've done a roasted chilli brownie. I use chilli padi, the green and the red chilli. Naresh, I want to commend you on the tortilla. It's very soft and very supple. And I think for your first time doing this, outstanding job. You've cooked your steak beautifully. I wish there was a little bit more salt because the big bland thing there is the tortilla and the sour cream. So you need to overcompensate by oversalting something else there. And you could have done it with the steak, but you didn't. I felt your dishes didn't have enough spice for me. Looking at your masala, red in my head, was chilli. I put it in my mouth, no chilli. I like my beef sliced thin. So that when you bite into the taco, you can also chew the beef together with the taco. So the brownie is served without even a topping or a cream or a sauce. The only time that you should ever serve a brownie without anything on it is to kids. Overall, fair effort, I wish more chilli came through. I don't like my brownie naked. It's got to be a wet brownie or it's got to be a brownie with a sauce. Yours definitely needed a sauce. Okay. Oh, yeah, Naresh. This might be your last cook, you know, Naresh. Thank you very much. Thank you. You know, Audra Bjorn and myself have been doing this for three seasons. This is the best single challenge we've had in three seasons of MasterChef. But out of the six cooks here today, one stood out from the crowd to show us that chilli is the spice of life. And that was you, Andy. Unbelievable, like, really. This best dish win, I dedicate it to my children and my wife and my family. Let's see who coped least with balancing the heat of chilli. In what was ultimately an extremely high-level cook with delicious food that came out of it, unfortunately, if we had to choose two bottom contestants, Naresh, Shamin, come forward, please. At this current point, I think it's a very 50-50 chance for me. Everyone has their good days, everyone has their bad day. Today might just be my bad day and it might get me sent home. You guys shared very similar challenges and shortfalls in your two dishes. While they were tasty, we feel like both of your main courses shrouded the chilli a little bit too much. The chilli didn't come through as much. We really had to split hairs to find who was that little bit one up over the other. And it came down to the dessert, the one dessert that we would have returned to just a little bit faster than the other. was yours, Naresh. And that means, Shamin, I'm sorry, you're leaving the MasterChef kitchen today. Shamin, I want to remind you and everybody else here that you won our hearts in your audition dish. 
best dish. You know, you're such a beautiful soul and you cook with so much careful thought, but it's with a heavy heart. We have to say goodbye to you now. Thank you very much for being here, Charlene. Thank you, Charlene. Thank you. Thank you. I have reached this far in the competition and it's going to be a lot of opportunities for me, endless possibilities. I'm going to cook and continue cooking and just follow my dreams. Next time, cooking for loved ones triggers a torrent of emotion. You're there, but can and a fight with fresh versus canned. I really feel like I'm out of my comfort zone. Drops an absolute bombshell. It's time to leave the MasterChef kitchen.